The Air Pollution Exposure Lab is really designed to study any kind of pollution in the air. Air pollution is known to cause asthma and COPD, uh, but also if you have asthma and COPD already, air pollution will exacerbate it. So that can lead to just worse symptoms or maybe even an emergency visit or occasionally a hospitalization. I was initially interested in asthma because my mum and sister have asthma. The focus of my PhD research was looking at how anti-inflammatory drugs that are used in asthma treatment work and how they're affected by different stimulus. What Chris Ryder did in his previous training was work in a lab that showed how steroids are less effective under certain circumstances and we thought that perhaps pollution would do the same thing. There's lots of types of air pollution. So one is from traffic, which we've always focused on. Diesel, it turns out, globally, is the most common source of the fine particles. These are the very small particles that get deep in the lung, especially in urban environments. So it's a logical thing to study. The study is called the Diesel Induces Glucocorticoid Resistance Study, or DIGA for short. I started to have different asthmatic symptoms when I was about 10. If I'm around smoke, that definitely can trigger an asthma attack. Sometimes a larger vehicle will go by and the exhaust gets me a little bit. I wanted to participate in this study because I thought the research question was really important. I think not enough studies are done that sort of pay attention to real life situations. The exposure booth was designed to be a space where we could control the exact amount of air pollution flowing in and out in real time so that we can see exactly what you're exposed to and then afterwards we could track how that affects your body. The exposure itself is not considered dangerous. It would be similar to visiting a big city like Beijing or Delhi for two hours. The point of Digger is we think that air pollution might be reducing the effectiveness of these asthma medications. And we want to look to see in the cells that line the lungs what changes are happening. We collect a variety of different samples to look at. There's blood samples, urine samples, nasal samples, any of the biological fluids that you can think of from the body. There are certain things that we will store for future usage in our fancy minus 80 freezers. We'd be looking at how different immune cells change and move around. And we can also look to see how different immune cells are coming in and changing the way the lung functions. I really enjoy the data analysis components. We'll look at things like epigenetics and DNA methylation. We're doing this to try to understand the health effects of air pollution specifically. And the lab's able to essentially prove that it's due to air pollution by this controlled circumstance. We're trying to provide information that will motivate governments around the world, including in Canada, to put in place measures that will reduce air pollution in the first place. That's the public health aspect. For those that can't avoid air pollution, which unfortunately is a lot of the world, we're working on ways to mitigate the health effects of air pollution that are ongoing. There's two things that are crucial for our research, funding and volunteers that will take part in our studies. BC Lung supported my fellowship, which allowed me to develop the DIGA study. BC Lung's support of air pollution research has really helped our lab, especially in projects that would be difficult to fund otherwise and also to generate what's called pilot data. So initial data that we can take forward to bigger funding venues and use as seeds essentially for bigger projects. And we're very grateful to BC Long for that. I hope at the end of this study that we'll be able to learn more about how air pollution is affecting medications that so many of us take on a regular basis. I think the potential of the study is really exciting. The DIGA study might be relevant in improving policy, but also how um, medications are designed for asthma treatment. 
we've for many years looked at the harms of air pollution, but what Chris is bringing is this therapeutic angle. What are the interventions that are most effective, that are really proven to help people who can't avoid air pollution? That's what we want to get out there, but it has to be based on real evidence. Thank you.